Okay, so reinstalling statically linked software. So all of the packages here we've installed once before, but they're all statically linked. So they're all a lot larger than they need to be. We can create shared libraries, which any program can use. And that, that means it's smaller. Um, I don't know exactly, but it probably means it can occupy less memory as well. Um, it says it's important you take a close look at this section. If you decide you can't bother reinstalling all the previously installed software, at least look at the new libraries and programs in this section. Oh, so there are other libraries by the looks of it. A few programs that are already installed depend on certain libraries when dynamically linked, but these libraries aren't only used by the already installed programs. I thought the software might require it as well, so you want to install those. Also, a few programs recommend other programs to be installed. We didn't require those programs for the GDBC and GCC installation, but we might as well install them now to avoid problems later. So yeah, just go through the whole lot. It's not worth risking only having a partially built system or partially uh, available system if you're going to install other stuff. So term cap, let's start with that one then. Uh, usual thing, zcat the archive and then pipe it through tar minus x to extract it. So we build this with configure, or rather configure it first, build it with make and install and that's done. So read line next. Once again, we do a configure. Right, okay, yeah, the home button doesn't work, does it? Okay, so once again, we make it with this command. Uh, if like me, the command is wrapped round, don't forget to add the shared bit on the end. Um, otherwise, I don't know what would happen. I presume you get some sort of statically linked or maybe it wouldn't link properly or build properly, I don't know. But it's obviously important to be there. Okay, that's done, so now we can install it. And install some shared libraries, and that's read line done. So now back to bash. So unpack it, configure the package we're running, configure with installed reline. Right, so that's configured. Let's build it with this command here. So again, we're using the old GCC to build it.
Okay, it's built. Now I've got to edit the make file and find the variable binder. So edit that. Of course with vim. So there's binder. Replace the current value with forward slash bin. So just delete the variable substitution there. And then install it with make install. Make install. And that's completed. It says uh, there's some information there after we've installed it, funnily enough, about compiling without debugging information by manually removing this minus G flag out of the make file. Um, which it says is usually found in the C flags section. So can't actually see it on this one. Um, but the trouble is that involves editing files, which is, you know, unless you really know what you're doing, um, not a good idea. Plus also sometimes there are sub projects or sub directories with their own make files. And that would mean in theory going around editing make files and looking for them. So I didn't do this myself, but obviously it's describing there the option to do that if you so wish. So that was installed. Let's tidy that up and move on to reinstalling SysV in it. So go to the source directory. Oops, source and run make. Okay, that's interesting. Don't remember seeing that before. Right, okay, I've got a note in my instructions that this needs to be compiled with the old GCC so that's why it's failing so I'm going to remove this directory because I don't know what it's done to the files extract it again and rebuild it with the old GCC the older one 2.7 and it should build now. Yes, it's fired off now. So that's done. So now I'm going to install it. And that's complete. So that's sysv init. Let's move on to reinstalling make. So once again, we start with configure. And we can build it. Okay, let's uh, install now, and that's done. Okay, so now we go on to sed. And the same thing, in fact, I'm going to bolt these all together, because there's gonna be a few of these.
Okay, so that's all done. There's no errors. So we know all those commands worked correctly. Let's tidy up and move on to shell utils. So again, remember that shell utils files is actually called shutils for the tarball. So unpack it, configure it with configure. Okay, let's build it with make and wait for it to finish. So that's all done. We copy the following binaries from the source directory. So let's change into that, be easiest. And we copy them to forward slash bin. That's all okay. Copy the following binary from source to S bin. So CP root to S. Bin. That's okay, and then copy the follow virus from source to user bin. User bin. So that's show you tools done. And now we're on to reinstalling file utils. Oh, right, okay. So, yeah, I've done file rather than file utils. So that's not right. File utils. So there's file and find utils, and then there's file and file utils. Sorry, file, yes, file and file utils and find utils, and then file and find file utils. So they're all quite similar names. And as you see, I, even I've got muddled up as well. So file utils archive, configure the package for running configure.
So let's build it. Okay, now it's just to edit the make file. So it looks like we adjust the destinations of the install. So we've got to look for the following variables. Binder is the first one. Remove the exec prefix and prefix parts. So we're left with the values bin, sbin, etc and var. So binder, we should have bin. The next one's sbinder. We should have sbin. Then sysconfter, that's that one, remove prefix, so we're left with etc. And local state dir is that one, remove prefix, so we're left with var. So let's save that, and we can now run make install. And it says move the bin install to the user bin directory. Right, yes, I've got a note here saying that I didn't have an install at bin, so um, can't do anything about that at all. You can see there's no install that's been installed in bin. But we have an install here, which has just been installed. You can see that's today's date, the 18th. So it's already in the correct location as per the book. So I'm not quite sure why that's there. Again, it could be because I've used a slightly newer version of the package and it does things slightly differently. So I'm not going to be too worried about that. So that's complete, tidy that up, file utils and move on to util Linux. All right, so let's extract util Linux. So there's quite a few bits of instructions there, so we need to copy this or interpret it carefully. So let's start by running configure. So again, this is the package that hasn't got configure. Um, so next we go to the lib directory. Compile the files there by running make. Go to the F disk directory. Is that under there? No. So I presume it's back to the top. Make F disk. Right, now I had this problem when I was testing this um, and I found what I needed to do was to add um, an environment variable here called cpath to point it to uh, an include path on the system. Um, the 
uh, looks like it's the kernel uh, include path, I think. Uh, user source Linux include. So I needed the, this include directory to get this to work. Um, whether that's correct or not, I don't know, but I did find that the Linux kernel had this SCSI header on there and it seems to work fine as well. So then we've got to make CF disk. Right, where's that one? All oh, right, it's the same directory. So let's try it like that. Okay, that's compiled correctly. So we've got to copy both of those to SPIN. To SPIN. So that's done. Copy the man files. So cp minus v two man files, and they go to user man man eight. Go to the login utils directory. Copy the following file to man man one. So cp minus v user man man one and copy the following file a getty dot eight to user man man eight. Go to the mounts directory. Pull the utilities by running make. <laughs> and we copy these three, sorry, four files to Spin copy the following files to user man eight, so all the star eight files. To user man man eight. Remove the sbin swap off symlink and recreate the symlink that links sbin swap off to sbin swap on. No, I couldn't see the point of this. Um, if we look at sbin swap off all the points to swap on. So I couldn't see the point of that. Um, unless the link, no, I thought the link just pointed to the name of the file, uh, unless it points to the inode, but um, as far as I know, a symlink is just a text label. Um, so I guess what I might do is just leave that there as I did before and try running swap off. Um, I could run it now, I guess. And as you can see, it still works. Um, and that's the new binary swap on. It's just been built. It's 1531 now. So it's just two minutes ago. That's today's date. So I don't understand why we, you would remove the swap off link and then recreate it when it already points. Unless in previous revisions of this document, um, swap off was a binary or, you know, maybe it was swap swap on but it actually been renamed to swap off possibly I don't know 
So I don't really see any point in that as the manual stands as it is. So let's now go to the sysutils directory and make the message compile rdev with make rdev and copy the message to bin and copy rdev to sbin copy the following files to user man man 8 so all of these cp minus v to user man man 8 create the sim links that link sbin rdev, sbin swap dev, sbin ram size, sbin vid mode and sbin root flags to sbin rdev. Um, copy sim links a link has been on. Right, yes, yeah, so I think what it is, each of these links point to RDEV, but they depending on how RDEV's called is how they operate. I think that's what that is. So LN minus SV RDEV to four slash uh, let's copy these. First one is um, Spin RDEV. Right, okay, yeah, of course it's already in there, so that that's incorrect. That shouldn't. Oh, yeah, that links RDEV. Yeah, that's right. That shouldn't be there because you can't link Spin RDEV to Spin RDEV, so that's wrong. So that needs to go in there. So we've got our dev pointing to swap dev. Then S bin RAM size to our dev. S bin fit mode to our dev. And S bin root flags to our dev. So if you run each one of them, You can actually see that um, root flags we've done is one of these executables, same as running rdev minus r, swap dev, ram size, and video mode. So those four tools are the equivalent of running rdev with those switches. So now we go to the text utils directory. Compile more. My by make more more help dir equals user share more. So let's copy and paste all that in. And cp minus v, so copy the executable to user bin. Copy the man file. to user man man1 create the user share more directory and copy more.help to it And that's util Linux done quite long winded. So now reinstalling text utils. So it's a cat text utils tar minus x v. Configure.
and we build it with make. So now we edit the source make file and find the variable binder, which is there. Replace the current value with user bin. So insert forward slash USR forward slash bin, save that and run make install. And lastly, we copy user bin cat to bin cat. In fact, I think that probably should be just like that. Oh, there is already a, a cat there, funnily enough. So let's just check user bin. All uh, right, okay, so that's December the 8th, that's just the one just been built. And the one in bin, right, so that's probably the static one because the one that's in user bin is 77K, nearly 78K, but the other one in user bin sorry, in bin is 512k, so that's obviously a static linked one, and that's why we're moving it, because we're overwriting it. So, cp minus v, user bin cat to forward slash bin. So, now if we look at the bin version, we've got the one that's just 77k. And that's it for Taxi Tools. So reinstalling tar. Configure it with configure. Okay, and we'll build it with make.
Right, now edit the source make file again. Find the variables binder and libexector. So there's binder. Give binder the value forward slash bin and libexector. Give it the value user bin. Slash user slash bin. Save it and run make install. And it says if you don't need the RMT program, you can delete it. So I'm not quite sure what this session is with the RMT program, but um, I would have thought if you want a full installation, you'd, you'd leave it on there. So let's now remove tar and install, reinstall gzip. So configure again with configure. And make to build it. And it says about this error again, which we've got. So again, it's got, looks like the same fix as before. So gzip.h, we need to edit. Look for this base name, star base. There it is there. And we just change base name to base name to the looks of it again. And then modify util C and do the same. Change base name to base name two. And then rerun make and it carries on. So that's done. We need to modify the make file again. Look for binder. And we change that value to forward slash bin. Save it and run make install. And let's choose it done. So now reinstall Bison. So again, this is just a configure make install. So I'm going to recall the command I used before. Configure make and make install. And just let that all run in one go. And in fact, you can see the next four packages are identical. So doing it this way just relieves a bit of the tedium slightly. Okay, that's bison done with. So now we do flex. And again, we do the same procedure, configure make, make install. Just double check the commands are exactly the same before we carry on in case there's some subtle difference. And that's flex done. So now we're on to bin utils. Again, we've got this same make uh, configure make make install.
Okay, that's finished building. So we can tidy that up. And move on to grep. So once again, the same triplet of commands. And that's great done. Tidy that up. So I go on to Mork, and as you've seen, we're using Gork, but um, there doesn't seem to be any discernible difference as far as Linux from Scratch 1.0 is concerned. So for the last time for a short while, we'll use the triplet commands. In fact, the next package would use the triplet for the fact that it fails halfway through, as you can see with that base name error. So we could fix that up front, but I think it's nice to try and build it as it is without um, fiddling around with it. Okay, so that's Gork. So now we're on to find utils. So first we run configure. Now we attempt to run make. And as it says there, although it, it's a fatal error, it does appear to go through to the end without any errors. Although there's errors in the middle of everything, it doesn't report the error right at the very end. So we now need to edit find forward slash make file. Look for the variable C flags. Add this value here. I'm not sure if the extra space makes a difference or not. Um, and then save that. And then edit the find defs file. Find defs h, find base star base name. There it is there. Change it to base name two. Right, it says it's read only file. Since remember we had this b before this problem, so I'll just do x to save an exit and exclamation mark to override that warning. Just double check that it has actually retained that. It should have done. There it is there. So that's fine. And then we do the same with the find util.c. 
think we'll star base. Okay, it's on a different line, so there it is there. Insert add a two. We've got the warning about read only files, so when we save it, X and an exclamation mark. And again, just double check it. Yes, it's retained it. So now we can run make again to let it continue and finish properly all the way to the end. And finally make install. And that's find your tools completed. So now on to reinstalling diff utils. And yep, configure make install. So let's just recall that command, all those commands, and run them in one go. Okay, so we can tidy that up. That's diff utils. Now we're going to install less, which we haven't had on the system so far. And again, it's the triplet of simple build, configure and build commands and install. So that's less completed. And now we're going to do Perl. Oops. So it says to run the configure command to configure the package, but if you want to accept all the defaults, which we do this time, because we're not building a static um, version of the program, we can just run configure with minus D, I presume that's for defaults. So this will take a minute or two. Okay, it says if you'd like to make any changes, configure the SH for a begin. Do it as a shell escape now, or press return to use shell escape to edit. So, is this going to time out? Right, so I see. So, it's either press return to carry on or use shell escape to edit the config. So, I press return and it carries on with the configuration.
Okay, that's done. So now let's build it with make and come back in a short while.
Okay, so that's finished building. Let's run some tests we can do. So let's see how long these take. Okay, that was uh, really quick. So we can now install it. And tidy up. It's now gonna reinstall M4. So again, this is the triplet of commands to configure, build and install. And that's done. So lastly in this chapter of reinstalls is text info. And although you may think that a lot of these weren't in reinstalls, they weren't, but as it said earlier on that some of these packages were reinstalled, uh, reinstalling rely on extra functionality supplied by other tools so it's a good idea to install them now so we've got the configure on its own Build a package using the older compiler. And finally, make install. And that's text info done. So move on to the last chapter in the basic LFS build.